The Radium Girls, hired by Radium Dial and U.S. Radium Corporation, were employed to paint watches with luminescent radium paint in order for World War I soldiers to see their watches in the dark. However, after realizing that every time they put the brush in their mouth to point in the tip, they were ingesting a bit of poisonous radium, they sued the company. Using the last few months of their lives, the Radium Girls fought the increasing influence of the radium dial on society, prejudice against women in the 1920s and 30s, and the radium that was taking a toll on their lives. In doing so, they changed labor rights and science forever, they won the lawsuit and caused future safe workplace laws to be passed, and illuminated the dangers of radium to society. Marie Curie in 1898 discovered radium. It was reported to have healing effects that seemed miraculous. Soon radium was advertised in many products. A radium-based paint was used to make clocks glow in the dark. During World War I, soldiers had to hide in dark trenches and the new luminous radium dial watches made it easy to see in the dark. The U.S. military gave a contract to the U.S. Radium Corporation in Orange, New Jersey to produce these watches. Driven by the need, Radium Dial opened a factory in 1921 in Ottawa, Illinois to make these clocks for the public. The U.S. Radium Corporation hired about 4,000 young women fresh out of high schools to paint the dials of a clock with a paste made out of radium salt called Undark. Few companies at that time were willing to employ women and the pay was much higher than most alternatives so the company had little trouble finding employees. These women, known as the Radium Girls, had to paint the tiny numbers and indicator hands of watches. The brush tended to lose its shape so they were encouraged to use their lips and tongues to keep the tip of the brush sharp and clean. During their breaks, the girls would use this paint to entertain themselves. Uh, in the dark, the clothes would be sparkling. And one uh, sister-in-law, she got her fur coat, and they said it, she hung it up, and it just sparkled. None of them considered this behavior risky. Why would they when doctors were using the same material to cure people? So... Radium is a radioactive material, affects DNA, just like the sun affects your DNA in your skin and causes skin cancer. The radioactive material from the radium um, affected the DNA of these women um, and it ch caused cancer or it caused the cells to die. One by one, the young workers began to fall ill and developed odd medical issues that their doctors couldn't explain. Their teeth fell out, their mouths filled with sores, their jaws rotten, and they wasted away, weakened by an apparently unstoppable anemia. By 1924, nine of the dial painters were dead. The Radium Girls changed science because they took away radium's wonderful label and showed society what radium really could do. In 40 years, the hype about radium changed dramatically and it was because of the radium girl's perseverance. The radium dial had already known about the dangers of radium. Catherine W. and the other radium girls had to file a lawsuit against the company and show the court how radium ingested during work caused their symptoms. Despite the fact that radium dial chemists had been writing up reports on the risks of excessive exposure to radium, the girls were told the paint was completely safe. The radium was found to destroy DNA and cause mutations. Radium that was at first thought to be a wonderful element came crashing down. Even though the rest of the world had spent years playing with radium, the faster they escaped the radium, the more normal life they would have. Gradually, the public started becoming suspicious of radium, but Radium Corporation kept quiet. Soon, researchers concluded that radium was connected to the girls' deaths rather than causing it. What the girls didn't notice was that the upper management and scientists at U.S. Radium were not so open about exposing themselves to radium. The factories couldn't keep the lid on their terrible secret much longer. That didn't stop them from trying. They paid off doctors and dentists to claim the girls were suffering from the sexually transmitted disease syphilis. Cecile Drinker, a Harvard physiologist, was hired by U.S. Radium to write up a report on the conditions at the factory. Drinker couldn't be easily paid off, so U.S. Radium took his report and rewrote it. In the new report filed, it claimed that every girl is in perfect condition. Always a struggle between money and truth. And it's always going to be a struggle. 
One of the first legal suits against the U.S. Radium Corporation was filed in September 1925 by Grace Fryer, but getting justice would be hard. First, there was the fact that radium poisoning was not officially a compensable disease. Then, there was money. The little money they had was used to pay doctors. There was nothing left to pay for lawyers. This doesn't even include the little rights young women had at this time. It took Grace two years to find a lawyer willing to take her case. In 1927, attorney Raymond Berry filed a suit against U.S. Radium on behalf of Grace Fryer and four other Radium girls. Um, and nobody was fronting him cash on this case. In Ottawa, Illinois, a Radium girl, Catherine Donahue, started experiencing the harmful effects of Radium, and she sued Radium Dial. For justice to triumph, it took the remarkable courage of a lawyer, Leonard J. Grossman, who was willing to work for free, and an extraordinarily courageous style painter, Catherine Donahue, who was prepared to fight the case literally to the death. Radium Dial delayed the trial several times, hoping that Catherine would die before they could finally sue and go through with a trial. After eight appeals, victory came on October 23, 1939. The settlement for each of the Radium Girls was $10,000 and a $600 per year annuity while they lived, and all medical and legal expenses incurred would also be paid by the company. The Radium Girls became a turning point in history, changing laws about worker safety and worker compensation for diseases, not only physical injuries. Before the lawsuit, the Workers' Law of Compensation only applied to injuries that were obvious to the eye, such as a broken bone. Any other disease or internal injury would not merit compensation. The right of individual workers to sue for damages from corporations due to labor abuse was also established as a direct result of the Radium Girls case. After the case, dial painters were instructed in proper safety precautions and provided with protective gear like metal styluses. They no longer shaped the brushes by lip and avoided ingesting or breathing the paint. Many other poisonous substances were addressed too. After the Radium Girls case, they demolished the factory because some of the fumes and radiation could still be harmful to the workers that worked there. This proves the Radium Girls' influence, since they fought for what they knew was wrong, even after they were harmed. The Radium Girls stood up against prejudice against women by suing even though they did not have very many rights at that time. At the time, the labor movement was dominated by the American Federation of Labor, a union made up mostly of white male workers. It was not easy to mobilize workers and unions around the health issues of these young women. Even though it was dominated mostly by males, the Radium Girls still persisted. The society, the living dead, the organization that he helped put together for all these women. My dear girls, if we ever give a medical report to you, there here will be a riot in this place. When a male celebrity got radium poisoning, he was given more attention in the media than the Radium Girls. The company purposely made this job for women, believing that they would not stand up for their rights. But the company was wrong. The girls were brave and fought for their rights. They changed the reputation of working women in the 1930s and made women more inspired to stand up for their rights. So through the scientific studies at Argonne, where the women were studied for decades, they left us this resource of information that we could gain in no other way because they were the only group of people that had been exposed to internal radiation. The Radium Girls took a stand in history by standing up against all the prejudice and by daring to say that radium was not the wonder element they thought. Most other women, including most of the Radium Girls, were too scared to sue the company in fear of losing their job and excellent pay. But Catherine Donahue was brave enough to stand up when many other people did not, and while doing so caused much change. The Radium Girls shaped labor rights and helped make our country as it is today. It's one thing to say that's wrong. It's another thing to do something about it. It's easy to say that's wrong and then continue to watch your television show or listen to your music. But to stand up and do something is special. Following Catherine Donahue's case, safety standards were introduced to protect not only a whole new generation of dial painters, but also those working with plutonium and making atomic bombs. The Radium Girls caused changes in feminism, labor rights, and science. The Radium Girls did not die in vain. Their influence lives on. Like the clock faces, the Radium Girls glowed in the dark.